feet. Is there anyone happy to be in the house of the Lord today? I heard about two of you. Is there anyone happy to be in the house of the Lord today? Is there anyone here that could say that the Lord has been good to you? Is there anyone that could tell me that the Lord has been good to you? Has he been good to your family? Has he been good at your job? Has he been good in your life? Did he change your life? Has he brought you from a mighty long way? Is there anyone happy to be in the house of the Lord today? Hallelujah. Now I want you to turn to your neighbor and tell him, neighbor, the enemy has won some battles, but he's not going to win the war. Hallelujah. I said he's not going to win the war. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lord, we worship you today, Father. We give you all honor and all glory, Jesus. Move within your house, Father. Saturate this place with your spirit, Lord. We came for one and receiving from you, Jesus. Somebody shout, hallelujah. Here's a little song. This is a little song we used to sing back in the day. And if you know it, just uh, sing along with me. It goes a little something like this. Jesus, I'll never forget. What you done for me Jesus, I'll never forget How you set me free Jesus, I'll never forget How you brought me out Jesus, I'll never forget No, never hey, How can I forget What you've done for me hey, How can I forget How you set me free How can I forget How you brought me out
of Jesus and all he's done for me. My soul, my soul, my soul. That's it, that's it, that's it. Just, just worship him. Don't ever forget where the Lord brought you from. Don't you ever forget what he's done for you. Lift your voice. Hallelujah. There's a little song that says, I love you. I love you. I love you, Lord, today, because you care for me in such a special way. That's why I praise you. I lift you up. I magnify your name. That's why my heart is
arms I feel protected. Sing it church. the power of the Holy Ghost fall on me. Let the power of the Holy Ghost on me. Sing it now. Let the power of the Holy Ghost fall on me. Sing it to the Lord. Sing it to the Lord. Let the power of the Holy Ghost
clap your hands to the Lord. Hallelujah. You may take your seats. Thank you, Jesus. It's good to be in the house of the Lord. Amen. I said it's good to be in the house of the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. It's now time to uh, pick up our tithes and our offerings. I'm going to ask our ushers to thank the Lord that I belong to a church. Our pastor has always taught us that we don't give because we need to. We give because we want to. How many, how many of you believe that today? Amen. We, we've understood that there's a secret in giving to the Lord. And if you dare to give to the Lord, the Bible says he will open up the windows of heaven and provide a blessing for you that you're not even going to have room in your house to spare. How many of you trust him like that today? Amen. Thank you, Jesus. I'm going to ask our ushers to make their way. the best thing I ever, ever done. Sing it, church. Falling in love. This is your chance to sing, sing. the best thing I ever, ever done. In his arms, I feel protected. Sing it to the Lord. so good to sing praises to the Lord. Amen. I'm going to ask you to stand to your feet, church. It's a great honor and a great privilege to introduce the man of God of this church. To me, my pastor is someone who not only has shown me his love through the Lord, but shown me a love like a dad. He treats me like a son so happy he's out of the hospital. I'm so happy that he's cancer free. I'm just happy that the Lord continues to move in his life. And I'm thankful that I have the kind of pastor. I just want to tell you that if the Lord was to ever give him the assignment to go into the enemy's camp, he'd do it for you. Our pastor, God bless you, church. Clap your hands to the Lord.
went wrong on me. So I had to scamper real quick and find me a substitute. Thank you.
Christ. Hallelujah. If you could be so kind as to open your Bibles to 2 Chronicles 29 and 26. Amen. And we're going to begin at 29, 26, 27, and 28. Praise the name of the Lord. After this service, amen, we're going to have to do something very special. So we're going to need to for everybody to please, amen, um, don't leave. Amen. Uh, you know, some folks take off as soon as the last, amen, don't do that. We have uh, something very important we need to do. We need to present the new leaders, amen, for 2022. Can somebody say amen. Second Chronicles 29 and 26 says this. And the Levites stood with the instruments of David and the priests with the trumpets. 27. And Hezekiah commanded to offer the burnt offering upon the altar. And when the burnt offering began, the song of the Lord began also with the trumpets and with the instruments ordained by David, king of Israel. Verse 28. And all the congregation worshiped. All the congregation worshiped. And the singers sang, and the trumpeters sounded, and all this continued until the burnt offering was finished. Praise the name of the Lord. I want to talk to you today, Church of the Living God. How is your temple? How is your temple? How is your temple? Let's pray. Jesus, God Almighty, we give you the honor. the name of the Lord. How is your temple? I'm talking to you about the temple or the house of the Lord. Amen. And it has a second, it has a dual meaning. Amen. It could mean the temple, amen, that we all congregate in here. Amen. And it's also, amen, to mean your own temple. Praise the name of the Lord. So we're going to have a, it's going to have a dual meaning, but at the same time, you're going to know when to apply it and where it applies. Praise the name of the Lord. True worship. Amen is of, of a precious is of precious value in the sight of God to be a true worshiper. Can somebody say Amen? Praise the name of the Lord and 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 God. That's what He's looking for. He's looking for true worship because there's a lot of people that say they worship that they're worshippers of Jesus Christ and that yet they're doing all kinds of other things. On Amen. As soon as they're not in the house of God, hello somebody. Amen. True worship is of precious value in the sight of God because this is what God. Amen. This is what's uh, important to God. This is what he's looking for out of your life and out of my life. Can somebody say amen? Praise the name of the Lord. John 4, 23 and 24 says this. Amen. The, amen. Thank you. But the hour cometh and now he is when the true worshipers, there it is, true worshipers shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth. Amen. For the Father or God Almighty is seeking such to worship and he's looking for true worshipers, not worshipers. There's a lot of people that say they worship God. But they're not true worshipers. God is looking for true worshipers today. Hello, somebody. Amen. God is a spirit, verse 24. And they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. Praise the name of the Lord. So there's one very important element we need to have. We need to be born again. We need to be born of the water and of the spirit of God. Can somebody say amen? Praise the name of the Lord. So we need to receive, amen, in order to enter into the kingdom of God, amen, Jesus, hallelujah, amen, Nicodemus went to see Jesus and to see, inquired with him and to, he says, you know what, I know you're a good man, amen, otherwise the things that you do, you wouldn't be able to do them, but I just want to know, amen, how does, a, how does somebody has to get, how can somebody get into the kingdom of heaven? And he told him, verily, verily, I say unto thee, a man must be born, I must be born again. 
And then he tells them, well, how can I be born again? Do I go back inside my mother's body and be born again? He says, then he clarified for him. He told him, verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born of water and of the spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. Amen. You got to be born again. You got to be born of the water and of the spirit. You got to be baptized in the name that is above every other name, in the name of Jesus Christ, in the baptismal waters after you've repented of your sins and you need to be filled with the gift and the power of the Holy Ghost. Because God is a spirit, and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. Hello, somebody. God is more interested in our hearts, brothers and sisters, than in any other thing. Hallelujah. That the condition of our heart is a major factor in whether we'll become a true worshiper or not. Hello, somebody. Proverbs, amen, says in Proverbs 4.23, it says, Keep thy heart with all diligence, for out of it are the issues of life. You have to be careful. What's your, what heart is he talking about? The pump in your chest? No, he's not talking about that heart. He's talking about this heart. Amen. This heart right here. Keep thy heart with all diligence. Don't let trash into it. Don't watch the wrong thing. Don't listen to trash. Hallelujah. Don't allow yourself to be present. Amen. In ungodly situations. Keep your heart with all diligence. Why? Because for out of it flow the issues of life, brother. Hallelujah. If you let garbage in, that's all that's going to come out is garbage. Can somebody say amen? you got to be careful what you allow into your mind. Keep thy heart with all diligence, for out of it flow the issues of life. Can somebody say amen? you got to protect your heart. The heart is the whole personality of a person. The emotional or moral and as distinguished from the intellectual nature. Courage, one of one's most innermost being, center the essential, amen, part. Hallelujah. It is the center of our spiritual existence just as the human heart in your chest, hallelujah, is the center of our natural existence. Can somebody say amen? This is, amen, hallelujah, our spiritual existence. This is our natural existence. Can somebody say amen? We must take care of our spiritual heart and your natural heart too. Praise the Lord, somebody. Amen. The world today, they take care of their natural heart in all kinds of different ways. Amen. Hallelujah. There are exercise sessions in, in Zumba. Amen. They're keeping, yeah, I got to make sure that my, you know, my body looks real good and all that stuff. Let me tell you something. It's nice to take care of your heart and your chest, but you better take care of your heart and your mind. Your spiritual heart is the one that God's concerned with today. Can somebody say Amen. Hallelujah. Hezekiah, amen, in the scriptures that we're talking about here today, amen, restores the temple. He needed to give the, 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 the temple a restoration, hallelujah, during the times of Hezekiah. He undertook the great task of restoring the temple of God after his father, King Ahaz, had allowed it to be made into a storage facility. And because of the dis this disdain for the house of God, the temple was no longer what it was meant to be. And you can't do that. you got to take care of the house of God. Can somebody say amen? That's why I'm on these brothers all the time, Brother Danny and the Lifeliners and the, and the brothers that know how to work with their hands. I tell them, Brother, tenemos que cuidar la casa del Señor. we got to take care of God's house because we use this place every day. We don't just come to church on Sundays. Honey, we're here seven days a week. Hallelujah. Night and day. Can somebody say amen? We're always here. Amen. So God's house gets used a lot. Praise the name of the Lord. And we got to take care of the house of God. Can somebody say amen? The temple was no longer what it was supposed to be. Hallelujah. The house of prayer and the house of worship, amen, is what it's supposed to be. But in their time, it was made into a storage facility. Amen. The temple is the house of God. It is the sanctuary place where God dwells. Today, the New Testament declares that God no longer lives in buildings made by the hands of men, but in the hearts of people today. Can somebody say amen? 1 Corinthians 6.19 tells us this. What? Don't you know that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost? If you have the Holy Ghost with the evidence of speaking in other tongues, don't you know that you, don't, that you hallelujah, are full of the Holy Ghost and you, your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost now? Amen, which is, which is in you? Amen, which you have of God? You are not your own. 
Hello, somebody. Amen. Praise the Lord, somebody. Amen. Don't act like, I mean, I know you ate good right now before you came, but praise the name of, no se me duermen. Amen. Don't go to sleep. Praise the name of the Lord. Keep breathing. Keep breathing. Hallelujah. Amen. It's going to be all right. Can somebody say amen? Don't you know that your body is a temple of the Holy Ghost, which is in you? Amen. Which you have of God. And you are not your own. Hello, somebody. If you have the Holy Ghost, you don't belong to yourself no more. You're, you belong to God. You said, I want to be, be accepted into salvation. I want to serve you. I want to love you. I want to live for you. Then, okay, está bien. That's nice. Praise the name of the Lord. Don't you know if you have the Holy Ghost, you don't belong to yourself no more? You know who you belong to? You belong to God Almighty. He's the one that died for you on the cross at Calvary. He's the one that sent the Holy Ghost to you. Hallelujah. So you can be filled with the Holy Ghost right now. Hello, somebody. Some of you are looking at me like, oh, man, I wish you would. Hey, man, I'm being convicted. I'm glad you're being convicted. I'm glad you're feeling it. Praise the name of the Lord because that's what God wants. He wants us to be stirred that we might understand, hallelujah, the importance it is to be, amen, to, to belong to him. Can somebody say amen? We belong to God. Hallelujah, because I belong to God. I don't belong to myself no more. Amen. There's a lot of things that I, I that my body wants me to do. I can't do them stuff no more. I've got no business doing that nonsense. Can somebody say amen? Hallelujah. Like just sleeping all day. Amen. Who in the world could you? <laughs> amen. You can't just get tries, brother. You gotta get up. Can somebody say amen? My flesh tells me all kinds of weird stuff. You don't do what your flesh tells you. You do what the Holy Ghost tells you. You do what God's word tells you. Amen. You've got to do what God says because I belong to him. He died for me on the cross at Calvary. He blessed me with a gift and the power of the Holy Ghost with the evidence of speaking in other tongues. And I belong to him. Hallelujah. I belong to God. Hallelujah. He can do whatever he wants with me. He can require me to get up. He can require to move me. He can do whatever. He can tell me to do whatever he wants me to do. Because that's what we need to do. Can somebody say amen? amen. Give the Lord a hand praise. If you know what I'm talking about here today. We don't belong to ourselves anymore. Praise the name of the Lord. We belong to God. Thank you, Jesus. Don't you know that you're, you're, hey man, your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost? You don't got no business, amen, hallelujah, polluting yourself, going to the wrong place, hanging around with all kinds of, amen, the wrong crowd. Hello, somebody. When you neglect your temple or when it is scorned, like during the, amen, the days of Hezekiah, we run the risk of becoming distant from God. You don't want to be distant from God. You want to be close to God because of our lack of communion with him. Hello, somebody. Amen. Because deep in the heart of every wor true worshiper, that is, there is a need. There is a longing. It is an insatiable desire to be in God's house. Can somebody say amen? Let me tell you something. I, it drives me crazy to miss church. Amen. It drives me crazy. Amen. When I, got to stay, when I had to stay home, I told my family, you know what? Amen. Don't, don't, don't stay here for me. I'm not invalid where I can't even, oh, no, stay here and you got to feed me, spoon feed me because I can't move. No, senor, I could get up and go to the bathroom and feed myself. You go to church, praise the name of the Lord, because if I could go to church, I would go to church too. Can somebody say amen? Unless I absolutely can't, then I understand. But let me tell you something, you got to quit making up excuses why you can't go to church and you need to start getting to the house of the Lord and stay in church. Can somebody say amen? There should be an insatiable desire to be in God's house, not to try to be outside of the house of God. I just thought I threw that in there. Praise the name of the Lord. King David was a passionate man. Reading what David said about his desire to be nearer to God, we can observe his passion. Amen. This passion that he had. This is what it says in Psalms 27 and 4. It says this. One thing have I desired and that will I seek after. That I can dwell and I can live in the house of God all the days of my life. I want to be there all the time. To behold the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in his temple. I want to be there. I want to I be right there. 
Praise the name of I want to be right there in the house of the Lord. I want to be there every, every time. Hallelujah, there's church. And I don't care if it's English or Spanish. I'll be there, both of them. How's that? Praise the name of the Lord. I'll be here on Tuesdays. I'll be here on Wednesdays. I'll be here on Sundays, morning and afternoon. It doesn't matter. Hallelujah. One thing have I desired of the Lord, and that's what I'm going to seek after. I'm going to be a passionate after that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life. Give the Lord a hand praise if you know what I'm talking about. The life of a true worshiper follows a discipline in going to the house of the Lord. Let's read Hebrews 10.25. Not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together as the manner of some is, como la maña de algunos, but exhorting one another, warning one another, it says. Exhorting means to warn one another. Why? And so much the more as you see the day approaching. What day? The day, the soon coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. Hello, somebody. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Because as we see the soon coming of the Lord, hallelujah, we need to come to church. Why? Because I need to be present and I need to warn my brother and my sister when I don't see them. Brother, where are you been? Sister, where are you been? We love you, man. We miss you. We're not perfect. Everybody falls short of the glory of God. Let me tell you something. Hallelujah. Amen. Everybody gets hurt behind this, that, or the other. Let me tell you, you've got to be an overcomer, brother and sister. You got to overcome all those trivial things that happen to everybody. Can somebody say amen? That stuff happens to everybody. Amen. Not just to you. It happens to me. It's happened to me so many times. If I was to make an archive of all the, I mean, the offenses that people did to me, hallelujah, it'd be a fat old book about this thick. Amen, brothers and sisters. But I don't hold, I don't keep a record of offenses that people do to me. Otherwise, I'd be sick and I'd be gone. You got to get over that stuff. You got to overcome that stuff. You got to be an overcomer or you're going to be overcome with a bunch of trash. Can somebody say amen? You got, can't forsake the assembling of yourselves together as the manner of some, but exhorting one another. And so much the more as you see the day approaching, the day of the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ, we need to be in the house of God, not out in the streets, not, in, not at work, not anywhere else, not eating, not doing a bunch of other stuff. We need to be in the presence of Almighty God. Give the Lord a hand praise. We are the temple of the Lord. Hallelujah, it is, it is of the utmost importance to come together with the other members of the body to be encouraged. Can somebody say amen? And to learn from one another. Can somebody say amen? Let me tell you something. Hallelujah, it brings joy to my heart to see people fellowshipping. Hallelujah, I love to see people fellowship after church or before church or all the time. Amen, because they're, they're sharing experiences. Hello, somebody. They're sharing their experiences and you know what? I can't teach everybody everything, but the other members of the church can. Amen. You guys can reach each other. Can somebody say amen? Yes. Hallelujah. And you, you, you share with each other and you, you talk about the experiences you have. Hey, well, you know what? Does anybody know where I can get a, hallelujah, a good pair of glasses? Yeah, over here. Come over here. I'll show you where to get a good. <laughs> All right. I'll be right there. I'll just hold that thought. Amen. I'll see you right after church. Praise the name of the Lord. Brothers and sisters, we learn from each other. Amen. We can't forsake the assembling of, of ourselves together. We got to come and encourage each other. Can somebody say amen? <laughs> Hallelujah. We need to encourage, be encouraged and to learn from one another. At the time that Hezekiah ascended the throne, when he took the throne, the temple had been turned into a storehouse, like I said. So Hezekiah therefore gave the temple a much needed restoring. He says, you know what, I'm, gonna, I'm not going to, the house of God is not supposed to be a storehouse. I'm going to change it. Can somebody say amen? He began with the front door. Amen. That which was exposed to the street, the superficial part of the temple, the outside of the temple, that which everyone could easily see. Upon coming to God, brothers and sisters, many people allow the Lord to deal with the obvious problems in their lives. Amen. Those that stick out the most. For example, the adulterer, amen, he stops going out. The drunk stops drinking. Amen. The cursor, he stops cussing. Amen. These are the obvious signs that, that we've stopped doing those bad things. Can somebody say amen? We've allowed the Lord to give us a new paint job, a, a dust off. A, amen. A, a, a new lock on the front door. Some new hinges. Amen. And presto changeo. All the exterior has changed. We've repaired the doors, but how about the inside? I'm not just talking about the outside. It was mira bien. Amen. He doesn't dress the same no more. 
He's not wearing all that ugly stuff he used to wear before. Amen. With his ankles and his pants ankle, uh, taped to his ankles and all that business. Amen. Or those rules. Amen. Never mind. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. He's changed though. You could tell because yeah, he's, not he's not dressing the same way no more. She's not dressing the same way anymore. Could somebody say amen? We learn what to do and what not to do. Yet how are we on the inside of the temple? How do we think? What do we think about? This is comparable to repairing only the doors and not going inside to take care of the rest of our temple. Hello, somebody. Amen. But let's not stop at the doors, brothers and sisters. Let's go all the, all the way to the inside. Amen. The Bible tells us in Philippians 1.6, being confident of this one thing. Amen. That he which has begun a good work in you will perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. He's going to finish the work and the process that he began in your life and in mine. Can somebody say amen? But it's up to you. He's, he's going to do it. Praise the name. But you got to let him. You have to allow it. When Hezekiah began the work of the temple, I'm sure that people would walk by the temple and would remark and say, wow, did you see the temple? It's being repaired. Yet little did they realize that the inside had not been restored yet. Amen. When we first started working in the church years ago, amen, we had to change windows and paint the whole place and everything else and put new stone and amen. And matter of fact, it's falling off. We've got to fix it. Where's Pete at? Now here, praise the name of the Lord. Amen. Some of those rocks are falling back off. We need to take care of the house of God. I don't like to see one, one stone out of place. Hello, somebody. But well, that's the way I am. I just like to take care of the house of God. He, he took care of me. He takes care of me. He takes care of me. I take care of the temple. I take care of God's people. I take care of everything I can. Hallelujah. But I can't do it alone, brother and sister. I said, I can't do it alone. I need help. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. This is why God says in 1 Samuel 16 and 7, For man looketh on the outward appearance, but the Lord looketh on the heart. Can somebody say Amen. The Lord is looking on the heart of man today. Hezekiah understood the importance of the house of the Lord. Hallelujah. Second Chronicles 29, 6 and 7 says this. For our fathers have trespassed. trespassed. This is the time of the Hezekiah. For our fathers have trespassed. And they've done that which was evil in the eyes of the Lord our God. And they have forsaken him. And they have turned away their faces from the habitation of the Lord and turned their backs. Verse 7, also they have shut up the doors of the porch and put out the lamps and have not burned incense nor offered burnt offerings in the holy place unto the God of Israel. They had walked away from God. You don't walk away from God. I tell the church this all the time because in the New Testament it says it would have been better if you, for you not to have known God than to know God and turn your back on God. And somebody say Amen. You don't do that stuff, brother and sister. you got to stay close to God. Hezekiah mentions the burning of incense, which represents prayer, praise, and worship. Everything that goes up before God. Hallelujah. Listen to what Hezekiah proposes to do about it. Amen. In 2 Chronicles, amen, 29 and 10, he says, Now it is in my heart. Amen. To make a covenant with the Lord God of Israel. I'm going to make an agreement with him, a covenant. Amen. I'm going to make a, a contract that his fierce answer, his fierce, fierce wrath may turn away from us. Can somebody say amen? That his fierce wrath will turn away from us. Amen. Because it, they were living in the, under some of the wrath of God. Now it is time to repair whatever is wrong in our lives, brother and sister. It's time for us to repair what is wrong in our lives. We need to make with a covenant with the Lord God of Israel. Hallelujah. So that way, amen, things will go better for us. Can somebody say amen? Second Chronicles 29, 16, and 17 says this. And the, pray, the priests went into the inner part of the house of the Lord to clean it. Amen. And brought out all the uncleanness that they found in the temple of the Lord into the court. Amen. Into the court of the house of the Lord. And the Levites took it to carry it out abroad into the brook of Kidron. Verse 17. Now they began on the first day of the first month to sanctify. 
And on the eighth day of the month came they to the porch of the Lord. So they sanctified the, they sanctified the house of the Lord in eight days. And in the 16th day of the first month, they made an end. They finally stopped. Praise the Lord, somebody. They went into every corner of the house of the Lord to clean out the junk. Hello, somebody. Brother and sister, we need to, when we're serving the Lord, and we're, we're, amen, as long as we're sincere with God, and we're really seeking, amen, a strong relationship with God and to be where God really wants us to be. When you're sincere with yourself and with God, you're going to ask God, go ahead. Amen. I'm going to let you go into every single corner of my life. I don't want to hide anything from you. I'm going to come before you in prayer. Almighty God, And I'm, I want you to just, amen, cleanse me and make me whole. Can somebody say amen? Hallelujah. They went into every corner of the house of the Lord to clean out the junk. We're good at cleaning out that which everybody can see. Yet we're even better at hiding what we don't want anybody to see. That certain room that has clutter back in the corner of our heart. Can somebody say amen? We want God to look at our living room, our dining room, the den, the bedroom. All these rooms that we have prepared for everybody to see. Oh, mira, tan limpio, mire. Mira bien. But God wants to, he wants the key to that room that you don't want nobody else to know about. He wants that key. He wants that room. He wants to see what you got in there. A true worshiper will ask himself probing questions. Can somebody say amen? A true worshiper will ask himself probing questions that may hurt. What? It is, what is it that's in my heart? Amen. What's my motivation for doing this or for doing that? Can somebody say amen? What areas of my life do I need to allow the Lord to cleanse? I don't know, but you know. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Because remember, we're good at hiding things. Amen. We're masters at hiding things. Amen. Hallelujah. And not being as honest as we should be sometimes. Hello, somebody. Hallelujah. A true worshiper will ask himself, Probing questions. What is my motivation for doing this? What areas of my life do I need to allow the Lord to cleanse? Should be our, our, should be our mentality today. Can somebody say amen? What do you think about? And listen to me very carefully. What do you think about when you're alone? What thoughts do you have when everyone has gone home and you're no longer within the four walls of your church? What are the things you go through? Amen. In your mind when you're alone in your bedroom after your family has gone to bed. Hello, somebody. The answer to these questions will give you a true reading of your heart's condition. Hello. Praise the Lord, somebody. We must allow the Lord to come into our temple, brother and sister. Amen. And take out everything that is unclean. Praise the Lord, somebody. When we maintain our daily relationship with the Lord... Not allowing the trash to accumulate. Our uncleanness will not have to be exposed so that way nobody sees nothing. Because people are real, real scared about, amen, oh no, I don't want nobody to know. Amen, or I don't want, I don't want them to find out. Amen, or you don't want them to find out, then just, then cuidado, amen, quédate, you know, stay, do what you're supposed to do. Take care of yourself. Can somebody say amen? Don't let the... Don't let the trash build up, amen. Don't let the, amen, those bad things to accumulate in our life. Can somebody say amen? Our uncleanness will not have to be exposed to the whole, to the whole world or to nobody. Can somebody say amen? amen? Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. This cleaning of the temple took 16 days. Para limpiar la casa del Señor. Wow, I believe the Levites said, okay, now it's time to party. Amen. We cleaned everything. All right, let's get down now. Yet Hezekiah said, nope, not yet. After the cleaning takes place in the house of God, amen, we need time for repentance. From allowing all this that should not have happened in our life for happening in the first place because it should have never happened. Can somebody say amen? amen? Remember, anybody can be a worshiper, but God is seeking true worshipers today. True worship requires true repentance Hezekiah knew that God's people had voluntarily neglected the temple, their, their temple, their house of worship. So therefore, not only a cleansing 
But a repentance from such a condition needed to take place. Can somebody say amen? Let's read Second Chronicles 29 and 21. And they brought seven bullocks and seven rams and seven lambs and seven he goats for a sin offering for the kingdom and for the sanctuary and for Judah. And he commanded the priests, the sons of Aaron, to offer them on the altar of the Lord. After the sin offering was burned, the sacrificial animals were unrecognizable. You couldn't tell what was there. Only the ashes remained. The only thing that remained were the ashes of something that had once was, but no longer was. This same way we must lose our identity and allow the identity of Jesus Christ to shine forth in our lives. Our lives should look like fine ashes without character or identity except for the identity and the character of Jesus Christ. Give the Lord a hand praise if you know what I'm talking about. It's impossible to freely enter into praise and worship without first having a real encounter with God. Can somebody say amen? Hallelujah. It's impossible to freely enter into praise and worship without first having a real encounter with God. When all the repair work had been completed, then the people began to enter into celebration. Hello, somebody. And the music began. Amen. Hermano, por favor. Ayúdame. Second Chronicles 29 and 36 says this. And Hezekiah rejoiced. And all the people that God had prepared the people for the thing was done suddenly. Can somebody say amen? Hallelujah. When the heart is right, the stage is set for true celebration, brother and sister. It can only come from a worshiper who is pure, clean, and justified from within because they've done their homework. They've prayed. They've come before the Lord. They have repented. One who has taken the time to humble themselves before God so he can fix our heart. My question to you tonight or today here this afternoon as you stand, amen, is how is your temple? How is your temple? Amen. Hallelujah. Take the time to humble yourselves before God so he can fix. Remember, your spiritual heart, not your natural heart, your spiritual heart, because this is the one, amen, that makes the decision. The, the battles are won and lost right here between your two eyeballs. That's where the battles are won and lost. And that's where the true heart is. That's where the spiritual heart is at. Amen. Take the time to humble yourselves before God so he can fix your heart. Hallelujah. A true worshiper is one who expresses him. Listen to what I'm going to say as I come to an end. A true worshiper is an individual who expresses himself outwardly of what has taken place inwardly. This altar is open. There's room for you at the cross, brother and sister. Hallelujah. There's room for improvement. Amen. How is your temple? I don't know. Only God knows. Hallelujah. Amen. And if you, amen. If God has spoken to you, this altar, hallelujah. Please come all the way forward, brother. Please come all the way forward. Amen. Hallelujah. Because people are coming behind you. Come all the way forward. That way there's enough room for everybody. Come all the way forward, please. Hallelujah. Amen. If there's an empty spot in front of you, amen, please fill it. Amen. Come all the way forward. Hallelujah. Come all the way forward. Thank you so much. Amen for your cooperation. Wait, wait. 
maker. You make a way out of no way. Praise the name of the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah.